If you have over $200,000 sitting stagnant in your bank, retirement account, or home equity, then you're literally losing money. On this show, you learn how to get that money working for you consistently and conservatively. Learn to grow your nest egg with your host, Sean Winslow. Let's dive in. What's going on, everyone? I'm Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. This is where we dig deep into tips and tricks on how to make your money work for you because we all know it's not what you make, but what you keep. So every Friday, we, we dig into different strategies um, from any, anywhere from you know personal finance to, to investing. Um, yeah, just to help you and everyone out there you know, get after those, those life goals you have and achieve that, that financial freedom and independence. And, I, and that kind of segues into the next part. I had someone leave me a wonderful review and just to remind you guys, I'm trying to get to hundred ratings. We're at 65 right now. So I'm hoping to get there by June, but I feel like we can do it even faster. But anyways, this was left by Barry.Jensen34, five out of five stars. You've given me hope that I don't have to limit myself to one career for the rest of my life in order to attain financial independence. I'm looking forward to hearing some of your upcoming episodes and seeing more of your work. Thank you, Sean. Well, thank you, Barry. I appreciate that review. And yeah, that's why we're all here. At least I hope to, to obtain that financial independence, that financial freedom, which then leads to what I think is the most important. That's time freedom, being able to do you know, what you want, when you want, with whoever you want. And, and to me, that's, that's the biggest goal. And, and that time freedom could be, there's so many different things you, you could you know, direct that into. A lot of people think it's all going to sip you know, a margarita or a Mai Tai on a beach. No, but like maybe that time is to pursue a different, you know, career or passion, you know, actually put it into, into work. Right. Or maybe it's to give back, spend more time with family. It can be literally anything you want. That's, that's the most amazing thing about it. Um, is that that financial independence leads to the time and time freedom, which then you can do what you want. Um, all right. So let's get into today's episode. As you saw from the title, we're going to be talking about volatility. Um, as I'm recording this, it's Thursday, February 10th, 2022, and we saw the major indices take a dip. We saw some volatility in the market. So we, sat, we saw the Dow, Dow was down 526 points. That's 1.5%. S&P 500 was down 1.8%. Now, this is not like you know, anything groundbreaking, right? Like I'm not sounding the alarms or anything, but we have seen the VIX. So the VIX or the CBOE volatility index, which stands for the Chicago Board Options Exchange. um, This represents the market's expectations for the relative strength um, of the near-term price changes of SP 500 index. So essentially it's predicting, you know, do they see a lot of price changes? So as the number goes up, they, they expect more price change, changes in the market. So what we call volatility, some people call it fear. Um, so for instance, right now we're at, we're at 23 on the VIX. Um, and for like the longest time, like if, if we look back over the last year, you know, it dipped down to like 17, even, you know, 15, 14. Um, and then we have had some spikes, but if, if you want to compare it to some, you know, instances that you're familiar with, obviously 2008. So in October of 2008, the financial crisis, that was at peaked at 79. And then at the beginning of the pandemic, March, 2020, it peaked at 66. Um, so we're seeing, we've been seeing it spike a lot lately. Like last month it, it hit um, 28, the month before it hit 30. So we are seeing it spike. And simply this just tracking what the, the market's expectation for future price changes or volatility fear. Um, and the reason why I'm talking about this, this is not, to, again, not to sound the alarm or to cause any, any panic, because obviously we're far away from those, those higher um, numbers. But we, we recently just had um, the new inflation number, new CPI, right? So that's why we saw the drop in the market yesterday, or excuse me, today. Thursday, um, the, the 10th of February. And that's because the government released its new CPI numbers, which can't, which increased by 0.6%. Um, 
So we're at seven and a half percent for the last 12 months. So I, as I've mentioned before, you know, this, the CPI is not that accurate, right? It's got some archaic calculations on how they calculate it. For instance, if you look at some of the numbers they released, gasoline is up 49.6%, used cars, 37%, energy, 29%, um, utility gas service, 24 meats, poultry, fish, and eggs up 12.5%, new vehicle up 11.8, all the way down to all items averaged seven, right? And then if you look at food, 6.3, food at home, 6.5, all the way down to shelter, which is at 4.1. And for me, since I'm in the industry of shelter, right, I own and operate apartments. I know that number is completely wrong. And I think it's, it should be broken out because I'm sure they're averaging, obviously, rent, but also mortgages. And we've been in a, a period of extremely low interest rates, right? So everyone's been refinancing or acquiring new properties at extremely low interest rates. So their mortgages have probably receded, right? because they're paying a lower payment um, because rates have been so low. But we all know shelter has increased way more than 4.1%, right? Obviously, home prices have increased way more than that. And rent, you know, is in the teens, the increase over the last 12 months. And and in some markets, even over 20%. So that number is completely wrong. So in my opinion, it's probably closer to true CPI is probably closer to 12, 15%, maybe even more. Um, But the purpose of this episode is what volatility does your portfolio? So we know that the recent volatility as in today in the market was due to the release of these CPI numbers. And, you know, as this year goes on, I think we're going to see more some more volatility, right? Because prices just keep going up. We have more supply chain issues, obviously the pandemic um, and the whole, you know, no whole thing like the great what reset or whatever they call it. Um, the great, no, excuse me, the great resignation, they call it without people working. I, th- I just feel like there's going to be more volatility in the market. So let's talk about what it actually does to your, your portfolio. So I want to look at two different portfolios and there's a visual I have here and I'll, and I'll if you guys want to see it, I'll, I'll give you um, the information on how, to, on how to get that. But essentially, we're going to look at two different portfolios. We're going to look at the return of the S&P 500 index over a two decade period. So 20 years. And I picked from 2000 to 2019 because I thought that was a great two decades to look at because we had both volatility, obviously. You know, from 2001, 2002 period, we had volatility, obviously 2008, some in 2013 range. And then we also had some strong, you know, strong bull market from, you know, 2009 onward. So I thought it was a great period to look at. So if if we look at this um, from 2000 to 2019, based on all the returns of the S&P 500 each year, the average return was 7.68% for those 20 years. Um, and so if you had invested, say, $100,000 at the beginning of 2000, you would be left with $324,000 and some change at the end of 2019. After two decades, you'd have $324,000. That's not too shabby, right? Well, let's look if you had a portfolio that had a fixed return. So you invested in something that provided you a preferred return. It would be the same every year over that time period. And then now let's make it 7.68%, that same average return. So if you had a a 7.68% return for every year from 2000 to 2019, obviously your average return would be 7.68%. Now, what would your um, portfolio balance be at the end? You think it would be the the same, right? Because it's same average annual return. No, it actually is not the same. It would be 430, excuse me, yeah, $439,000 and some change. So that's nearly, or it's over a $100,000 difference in the same time period, just because there was no volatility on a fixed return. And you're probably asking like, well, why is this? Like that, that doesn't seem correct. And when, you know, when I first, you know, looked at it a long time ago, when I, when I was studying finance, yeah, I thought, I thought the same thing. I'm like, 
what do you mean? They both have the same average return. Like why, why, how could they have different ending balances? And, you know, it, obviously if you 10 X that say you were fortunate enough to have a million dollars at the beginning of 2000, you invested it, you know, you're talking about a million dollar difference. You're talking about 3.2 million. If you were to invest in SP 500, and if you had a fixed return over that time period of the same average return, 7.68%, you would have 4.39 million. So over a million dollar difference. And the reason for this is just simply think about it. You have, you know, hundred thousand dollars, you lose 20%. Now you're at $80,000. Well, if the market goes up 20,000, I'm mean, excuse me, 20% next year. So you'd only be back to 96,000 if the market went up 20%, right? Because you, you got to think about it. You're taking a smaller num number, right? Starting number, and then implementing the same gain. It's not going to get you back to whole. You would need a 25% gain that year to get your 80 grand back up to a hundred grand. Just just to be back at whole, not to make more money, just to start again from, from day one. And so that's what happens over time is the, the volatility just erodes at your portfolio because as you lose, you got to make more back just to get the whole and then make even more to, to gain. Um, so if, if you want to get technical on this, um, for those of you that you know love the math, maybe you even already know this, the, the reason for this is, is there's two different types of of averages to calculate, right? We all know the um, kind of the arithmetic average, right? That's what we learn in school when we were a child. That's when you add up all the numbers and then divide by the number of, of data points, right? So if you had five data points, you'd add up those five different numbers and then divide by five. That's your average. However, the, there's something called a geometric mean. And this is something that you know, economists used, financial analysts use, even biologists use. Um, and that's because it takes into account the effect of compound. It's known as the multiplicative mean. And because, like I said, it takes into effect the powers of compounding. So, like I said, the, how you calculate the arithmetic average that we all know is, you know, by adding up the data set and then dividing by the number of points in the data set, right? Whereas the geometric, so the geometric average, that's calculated, calculated um, by taking a series of numbers, taking the product of these numbers and raising it to the inverse length of the series. So it takes into effect that compounding effect, right? And then obviously when you're investing, we all know that the compounding is the eighth wonder of the world. That's the power of compounding. So, so this is like not what a lot of people know. You know, you see people want to, you know, get into these high, high flying, you know, meme stocks, you're making like 20, 30, 100%, 700%, whatever it is. And that's great, right? But then you roll it into the next one, maybe that thing tanks. And then maybe you get a, a decent, you know, double on the next one. And then maybe, you know, a single and then another one tanks and then you get a home run, right? And that volatility just keeps eroding at your portfolio. Yeah, the average return is going to look phenomenal. And that's what Wall Street quotes. You know, I worked for a firm and everything was quoted your average annual return, right? Average return. But what's actually happening behind the scenes? And that's when you look at the, the geometric average and the, the arithmetic average. And this just shows everything. So like, for instance, in that scenario, the two portfolios, you know, if you invested 100,000 in each one of them, in 20 years, the difference would have been over $100,000. If you had just $100,000 to the positive, if you had just, had a fixed return over that period instead of, you know, try to swing, swing for the fences. So I just wanted to bring this to light as, as we see more volatility, I think it's really important to have a diverse portfolio, um, not just go all, all into the stock market. You know, as, as people say, the market always goes up. That's not true. Um, so I think it's, it's very smart to have a diverse portfolio and have some stuff in some fixed returns and, and, that's what I love about real estate too, is, you know, the, the cash flow element allows us to provide a preferred return to our partners, which, you know, I'll never call it fixed, right? Um, Cause there's no guarantees in anything, but that preferred return is paid before anyone else. And it's just really powerful that as an investor in, into what we do, you get that preferred return.
um, eliminates volatility way more than your, your traditional investments and allows your money to grow and compound over time. And that's what's powerful is we want to put our money to work as often as possible. You know, when you're taking big hits in the market, it's hard to do that, right? It's really hard to keep growing your wealth when you're taking, you know, in 2008, 37%, you know, whacked your portfolio. You, know, you have a million dollar portfolio and you lose 370 grand. You know, that's not, that's not a good day. Whereas you could just get in singles and doubles consistently. And over time, you're, you know, maybe, you, maybe once in a while you hit like a triple to home run, but consistently getting singles and doubles, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to be very happy. So guys, I hope this was a value before I let you go. Obviously, if you want to see this visual, because I know this was just a lot of numbers thrown out um, and it's, it's kind of hard to visual it in your head without looking at it. So if you want to get this resource, what is it? Just a simple email that'll send out, have a chart of the two different portfolios and a you know brief explanation. And so you just want to text volatility to 415-528-7403. Again, text volatility to 415-528-7403. Everybody, thank you for tuning in as always. Appreciate all of you. And I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, this is Sean Winslow. After being in the financial service industry for years and having candid conversations with good people just like you, I realized that so many of us are wanting an investment strategy that provides solid returns and consistent income without the bumps in the road. There's little known secret that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know. There is investment out there that is less volatile and the returns are stronger. Get more details by going to greenbriarcg.com and clicking on the free e-report. And by the way, if this show has provided you any value, then feel free to leave an honest written review and of course, share it with a friend who needs it. See you next week for another great show.